Good evening on the World News Tonight from BGI Television. First, the headlines. Stop the dirty politics. We can't be playing politics with everything. Tinubu. Moving on, ex-CBN Governor Senusi backs relocation move. And the next headline, Nigerian military aiding terrorism on Christians in play two states. Can't chairman. The next airline, Nigerian military issues warning to Khan, Chairman, amid tensions in play two. FCT police station, I beg your pardon, FCT police personnel stomp kidnappers then rescue 14 victims. And on sports this hour, Odek Bamim, Lawal, task Super Eagles on discipline ahead of Cameroon clash at the round of 16 through the ongoing Afghan in Abidjan. I am Moriri Rabila Lawal, the news in detail. The presidency, through the special advisor on information and strategy to the president, Bayo Ononuga, has reacted to the outburst from northern groups following reports of relocation of the headquarters of the FAN and some CBN department to Lagos State. According to information, Ononuga made it known in a post email on his official ex handle. The aide to President Tinumbu noted that the rumors that the president is planning on moving the federal capital to Lagos are untrue. Bayo Onanuga claimed that such rumors are dishonest ones perpetrated by those trying to draw attention to themselves. He noted that the administrative movement of FAN to Lagos State shouldn't cause any problems because Lagos State is the commercial capital of Nigeria and the FAN should be nowhere else but near the industry it regulates. This statement came after the Ariwa Authority Forum through its National Publicity Secretary of the Forum, Professor Mohamed Baba, described the movement of FAN and some CBN departments in Lagos State as a deliberate plot against the Northern region. The group claimed that Northerners would be negatively affected by a spontaneous exercise. Moving on to the next story. Former Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Senussi Lamine Senussi, has supported the planned relocation of five CBN departments from the head office in Abuja to Lagos. Senussi referred to those opposing the move as dangerous for the bank's future and emphasized the importance of putting the bank's interests before personal attachments to Abuja. The former CBN Governor alleged Many employees are children of politically exposed individuals who prioritize their lifestyles and businesses in Abuja over their work at the bank. He believed that relocating certain functions to the larger Lagos office would streamline operations, making them more effective and reducing costs. Senussi suggested that the Financial Systems Stability FSS Department and most of operations should be moved to Lagos, with the two deputy governors operating primarily from there. He also recommended that departments reporting directly to the governor, such as economic policy, corporate services, strategy audits, risk management, and the governor's office remain in Abuja. Sanusi argued that the CBS decision to relocate certain departments to Lagos was a strategic one that required proper analysis to determine which roles were better suited to each location. He stressed the importance of clear communication regarding the strategic intent to avoid misrepresentation and arbitrariness. Moving on to the next story. Minister Yeson Wiki of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, has expressed the view that combating crime in Abuja on any location is in totality is impossible. Wiki made a statement in response to public concerns about the recent surge in kidnappings and killings in Abuja and its surroundings. He suggested that many alarms regarding insecurity in the capital were raised by politicians with the intention of undermining the government of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. As said in a video, he said the so-called alarm is political. Some politicians are bent on making sure the government does not survive and they do it by creating unnecessary tension by carrying propaganda. Something just happened there, they tell you it has happened 25 times. He accused some of the people of blackmailing him for his frequent trips to his own state, River State, in South South Nigeria. Speaking on closed circuit television installation in the FCT, the minister said that if CCTV is installed, people will still vandalize the cameras. 
According to him, people have been stealing men all covers. And to the next story. In a recent and alarming development tinged with accusation of terrorism in Play Two State, the Nigeria Nigeria Reverend Timothy Dalup, the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria Khan in Mangu local government area, has leveled serious accusations against the Nigerian military. He claims that the military is working in collusion with fully militias to target Christian communities in Play Two State, excavating the already volatile situation marked by terrorists and communal strife. Allegations of military complicity in a candid video that has since gained traction on social media. Mr. Dalek alleges that the military is actively displacing Christians and enabling militias to destroy their homes and properties. You are watching the world news from DGI Television. Next to come. The military accuses the Khan president in Plato State of spreading falsehood and cautions him to cease such actions immediately. Moving on, the defense headquarters, DHQ, specifically alleges that Reverend Daluk has been making baseless and untrue accusations against military personnel deployed in the Mangul General Area. Brigadier General Tukur Gusau, the acting director of defense information, stated this in a statement and that individuals spreading false information, regardless of their societal standard, would face cons constitutional consequences. The military strongly condemn a video purportedly made by Reverend Daluk suggesting bias and support for a specific group. Brigadier General Gosau dismissed the allegations, stating they lacked any reasonable foundation. He highlighted that the military remains neutral, professional, and committed to its constitutional role of safeguarding citizens' lives and property. You are watching the world news still to come. Lifestyle, according to information that was gathered, that police operating on the Federal Capital Command attached to the anti kidnapping unit and the Robochi Division Police Headquarters in con the continued fight against kidnapping in FCT have rescued 14 kidnapped victims after a shootout. The victims were rescued on Thursday evening, today at a forest in a border community between Abuja and Nasarawa State, confirming the rescue FCT police spokesperson SP. Justin Ade said the combined team, acting on credible intelligence, stormed the kidnappers then located at Okia village via Nasarawa state bordering FCT. On sighting the police operatives, the hoodlums opened fire on the police operatives, which resulted in a gun duel. The police operative neutralized one of the kidnappers as he, as the rest, scampered to a nearby forest with grievous degrees of bullet wounds. The hostages who were rescued on earth have since been reunited with their loved ones. And to the next story from the world news, coming from the north. The Chinese man standing trial for the murder of his Nigerian girlfriend, Omo Kulfumbo Ari, has said he spent 60 million naira on his diseased lover. King Gordon, 47, opened his defense on Wednesday Day and Thursday at the Kano High Court at Miller Road. Mr. Gordon was charged with culpable homicide for the death of Miss Buhari. Mr. Gwandon allegedly did the act to Ms. Buhari, 23, at Jembalu quarters for allegedly refusing to marry him after exploiting him. On his first offense on witness day, the Chinese said he spent 60 million naira on his deceased lover in the two years they were dating. He said, besides huge amount of money I used to spend on her, I used to take her out to places like Bristol Palace and Central Hotel to eat food. I bought the house worth 4 million naira, a car worth 10 million naira, 18 million naira as capital to start a business and spent 500,000 worth of bags and shoes on a new shop and 1 million naira worth of laces and wrappers and a house in Abuja which she started building. Every of those things were bought by my own money. And at a long run since then, she stopped answering my calls because she thought I was broke. Mr. Gondan said through an interpreter, the judge Senusi Maaji thereafter postponed the hearing for the continuation of the defense till today. Today, Mr. Gwandon said he was attempting to save his life when he did the act to his girlfriend to death. According to the suspect, the disease picked a knife and attempted to stab him, but in the process, he gained possession of the knife and unknowingly did the act to our wife trying to escape the disease, who he said tried to suffocate him by grabbing his neck. At that time, everything went. I was so scared I was carrying a knife and dropped it. 
While attempting to regain possession of the knife, she bites my finger as narrated by the Chinese. She continued abusing me. At that point, I was still in possession of the knife. In the process, he used the knife to do the act to his ex-lover who is now a diseased. Moving on to the next story. From the north, we move back to southwest. A staff member of the microfinance bank at Kintao Local Abeokuta, Mr. Olumide Okwenaike, who has been missing since Wednesday, January 17, has been found in Mokwa, Niger State. The wife of the banker, who also worked as a microfinance bank in Onikolobo, Abeokuta, Temitoke broke the news to newsmen on Thursday. She said, I'm happy to tell you that my husband has been found in a place called Mokwa in Niger State. He called me on Tuesday afternoon. He got a phone from one of the residents there because he said those who abducted him collected his phone. We then told him to make a report at the police station there. The police officer on duty who spoke to us and said he was in Mokwa. Transportation money was then arranged and sent to him. He got to Ibadan yesterday, Wednesday, when he slept. His family members are at Ibadan. He will be back in Abeokuta today, as the information reads. Timitope Adam Sunday told correspondent that her husband, who left home for his workplace on Wednesday, January 17, failed to return home. A viral WhatsApp message had announced the missing banker and father of one said to be a member of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Strong Tower, Southern Zone of Headquarters, Ogo Province, 28. The WhatsApp message read that I want to let you know that Mr. Oponaki Francis Illumide has been missing since yesterday as read this statement. Moving on to the next story on the world news from BGI Television. Foreign. Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, has insisted on his resolution to annihilate the Hamas fighters. Given the reasons during the meeting with the US President Joe Biden, Netanyahu on Sunday, 21st January 2024, said Gaza must be demilitarized under Israeli's full security control. I will not compromise on full Israeli security control of all territory west of the Jordan River. We are continuing the war on all fronts and in all sectors. We are not giving immunity to any terrorist, not in Gaza, not in Lebanon, not in Syria, and not anywhere. Whoever tries to harm us, we will arm him. Regarding our hostages, we have returned home. As of today, 110 of our hostages, and we are obligated to return in all of them. This is one of the goals of the war, and the military pressure is a necessary condition to achieve it. And lastly, on the world news this hour from BGI TV is a sports news. As regards the ongoing AFCON in Abidjan, round of 16 is the next phase of the competition. Nigeria football legend Olusha Gondekami and Gadiba Lawa have advised the Super Eagles to be extremely cautious, stay focused, be disciplined, and have self belief when they step onto the field against the indomitable Lions in their Africa Cup of Nations round of 16 encounter in Abidjan on Saturday. Both Giants of Africa game have made a rendezvous at the State Felix Abu of Orkney following the Lions led surge that ensured a 3 2 win over the Gambia Barke on Tuesday at Nigeria. The earlier second place finish in Group A behind Equatorial Guinea. Rebami, a member of Nigeria's 1980 African winning squad and former captain of the team, who also played three times against Cameroon in 1975 friendly game that Nigeria won 1-0 and 1978 All-African Games in Algiers that ended 0 and 1980 friendly game that ended 0-0-0 as well, said the present crop of Super Eagles can achieve victory the way they did against the Lions at the same stage in Egypt four years ago, but must be extremely diligent and be very clinical with opportunities that come their way. We may say Cameroon have not pulled up any trees at this moment and at this tournament, but the way they turn the game around against the Gambia sends a message. They are not to be taken for granted. I watched their game against Guinea and it was a fight to finish. We have been creating a lot of opportunities in our games, but this time we have to be clinical. So says uh, Odegami and Garba Lawa, ex Super Eagles players. That's end the world news from BGI Television. Before we go, some headlines. Stop the dirty politics. We can't be playing politics with everything. Tinumbu speaks to blackmailers. Ex CBN Governor Senusi backs relocation move by the president. 
the next headline we brought to you. We can't stop crime totally in Abuja. All your noise is political process. Nigeria military aid in terrorism on Christians in play two states. Can't precedent. Also, Nigeria military issues warning to count chairman and its tensions in play two. And finally, on sport, ex egos place on the bar meet Lawa. Tax super egos on discipline ahead of Cameroon clash at the round of 16. For updates of our broadcast on YouTube, our handle is Babar Magidi Immortal Television. Can you subscribe and click on the notification bell, select option all to access all of our broadcasts. On Facebook, Magidi Immortal with Alawi Adibayo. Please like and follow the page. Thank you for watching. I am Mori Revila Lawa. Good evening.